I feel like I should be worried about how comfortable she's become with just a human head, you know? But I guess if you had to hack it off yourself, that pretty much gets you fairly desensitized. Oh, such human eye. Oh, no. Ew, fingers! Those are fingers! Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXXChic, and we are back with another reaction to Fallout. We're now on to episode three, which is called The Head. So the last episode, uh, our lead girl, she finally met up with the ghoul in a town because she's trying to follow these breadcrumbs to get to the woman who kidnapped her father. And it led her to this kind of lawless town where pretty much everyone doesn't like her because she is from the bunkers and everyone basically looks at the bunker people as like, you know, you guys hid when everything got hard, which I think is kind of true. But anyways, while she was there, the ghoul showed up and so did this escapee that we know that the knights are looking for. And when the scientist showed up, we see that the ghoul exposed himself. Wait, that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> He uh, basically showed what he was, that he was a mutant and um, he's looking for the bounty. Basically, he showed up to collect the bounty on the engineer. But we see that there were people there that were working to try to get him to the same person that our main girl was looking for. So a uh, big fiasco ensued and it would have probably gone a lot worse without the interference of our guy from the last episode who took over the night suit from the person who had it before. He was supposed to be a squire, but he very quickly realized that the man inside of the suit was not at all what he imagined him to be. And that young man took the suit and he wants to basically impersonate a knight and he wants to now capture this bounty as well because that, will, that to him is what will excuse the fact that he let the actual person in the suit die and give him the glory that he's looking for. Anyways, that battle didn't last long because our new guy in the suit is still learning it and he's not that good at fighting with it. So of course the ghoul was able to incapacitate him, but thankfully didn't take him out because he could have. And then the ghoul picked up on the trail of where our girl was going. And then we see that while the girl and the engineer were traveling, that the engineer took a cyanide pill. He's like, I'm not going to make it. There's no way. And honestly, all of me doesn't need to make it to this girl. Just take my head. So she knows that, you know, the whole, the deal was kept. And we all know that from the last episode too, that the guy shot some kind of, I think it was a chip or something into his head. So his head is where the information is, is my guess. We ended the episode with her doing that lovely task. So yeah, a lot went down in the last episode. Looking forward to seeing what we're going to get in this one. With it being called the head, I'm thinking that we're going to be talking about that very literal head. So I am ready to get in. So just before I do, though, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I do uploads of this show or anything else, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. So you will be in the know. All right. That out of the way, guys, let's get into the episode right now. Didn't we already see the beginning? Oh, we're going further back. Or are we going? No, this is further back. This is when he was still an actor. Got it. I still want to know what happened to his daughter. I mean, I'm assuming the worst, but it'd be nice if it didn't happen. Please. Although maybe a mutant is worse. Do I really have to kill him? Yes, it's part what? of the script. No, Neil, that's not what I do. I mean, is Bob a bomb around here anywhere? Bob's been fired. Coop. What? Studio fired him. Damn. They're selling you. You better start tap dancing. Bob's a bit of a communist. What? Communist? Cadillac Bob? Cadillac Bob? How? Okay. That's why it would be really great if you could just shoot away in the fucking head. <laughs> Please. Respectfully. Your personal code. Oh, is that your baby mama? Uh, hey, let's, uh, let's pick this up. Okay. Considering the time period, this would have been a little taboo. It's not great. It's lavender. Well, Get it if right. you like the taste of lavender, why not just drink a bottle of perfume? <laughs> it's subtle. Flirtation. Tastes like someone touching you for the first time. Okay, sis, you better lay that gauntlet down. Mmm. Mm. Caught that. Speaking of subtle and flirtatious, he hates it. Oh, I don't like the taste of lavender the either. Worst thing I've ever <laughs> yeah. I know it's edible, but I don't like it. I'm not a big fan of the smell either, so that's probably why. Sorry. Lipstick. Oh, I don't think he minds. So, what happened to mom? Do I want to know? Okay, Janie. Let's go. What's in that box? I feel like he's wearing it to this day. What's left of it? Oh, they were cute. What happened? <laughs> the alien just walking. <laughs> oh, 
uh, that imagery of them walking ahead and her falling behind. I don't know if I want to know what happened to her. Can he still smell? I guess you can't, right? Because I'm pretty sure you're, the, the senses you need for smell for scent are actually in the nose part, not up here. What is that? Drugs? Yeah, I guess she would have asthma, you know, living through a nuclear blast and all. You think Sis would like pick up a branch or something and try to create like a, at least try to hide the footsteps? Why are you being nice to him, dog? He hurt you. I mean, he also did help you, but he hurt you first. Wow, okay, I was gonna say, does she have anything to carry that in? But I guess not. And actually it being out, at least it airs out. I mean, it's still gonna stink, but might dry up a little so it doesn't smell as bad. I was gonna say, should you stop? But I guess she doesn't have a choice. She does need to rest. The mutant, I have a feeling, doesn't need to sleep. Deviled, where'd you get deviled eggs? Ah! Okay, so she does have something to carry it in. I was like, maybe you don't walk around with that. Really, you just playing with his hair and stuff, man? Oh, she found it. GPS. Smart. Put it up his nose. Better idea than the mouth, you know? But there no being no neck and all. I feel like I should be worried about how comfortable she's become with just a human head, you know? But I guess if you had to hack it off yourself, that pretty much gets you fairly desensitized. Mm-hmm. Did you not think of that through? You didn't, did you? died with honor and glory there's no way that guy would have said that about you he didn't give a damn about you <laughs> yeah that's gonna solve the problem like i'm fairly certain they put a tracker in that suit do you have anything you can even trade with sir to get that fixed i can fix it cost you five caps and you got nothing could you do it for four <laughs> Period. Know your worth, sis. Got anything else to trade of value? We buy teeth. He sold a tooth. Done. <laughs> oh, I love it. Scam him. It only cost you a tooth. Hell no. Listen, if I was under the age of 12 where I got to grow another set, maybe, but not now. <laughs> I'm not selling a tooth. That's why you don't leave expensive equipment unattended. What are you going to do? I hope you can fight. You realize they've got that armor tied up, right? Why would you do side? You should have made a shank. Okay, he doesn't actually do too bad. I mean, all that bullying, I guess, had some benefits. Maybe not. I spoke too soon. All right, I, I'm, I'm intrigued. Don't yell first, please. Oh no, they saw you, never mind. Balls. You're in the armor, bro. You wanna still do this? You still want to play? That's what I thought. Did the suit do that of its own volition though? I don't think he did that. Or maybe he did and I just didn't see. Either way, that is a, me oh yeah, your helicopter's back. Remember that? I want to root for him, but he's, he's kind of annoying me. Squire. Is it his friend? At least if it's his friend. Oh no, it's not. Told you there was a locator in that thing. Night Titus. I am Thaddeus. Whew. Also a tea name. I do not know what I've done to offend, but I beg for mercy. Please. Like, bro, you don't take his life because you screwed up. I, I don't do anything. Arise, my squire. Not him enjoying this. I'm not sure I like this character. After the way you were treated. 
you're gonna do this to somebody else. Okay. Kinda of felt bad for you getting your ass up before. It's fading. Do they purposely make those bags large and heavy just to torture these kids or? Cause it doesn't look like they're doing any kind of weight training to like learn how to carry them damn bags. Oh, what's that deer? Run Bambi, run! Unless it's a mutated deer. I don't know if I want to know what that is. In fact, I don't want to, it's fine. So I knew that, I knew that deer wasn't gonna make it. I just knew it. Get away from the water, what are you doing? I think you need more than a trank, sis. Oh yeah, the smell of death. Oh man, you gotta go swimming? I think she said she could swim. Yeah, good thing you put that GPS in. Hello again. <laughs> That's abusive. Not the deviled eggs! Okay, I, I don't know where it is. Okay, I lost it. That girl forgot it, huh? Sure. Whatever that is. I forgot about this place. Do we care what's going on here? I guess I'm not gatekeeper anymore. There, there. It's not a big deal. Totally is. I can tell by your body language. Who I even am anymore? Go, go marinate on it for a bit. Because some bonehead opened the door to the surface. A single bad decision that put everyone at risk. Not just Bolt Thirty Two. But 33 and 31 as well. You know, you have a lot of nerve talking to me about anything, ma'am. Weren't you offering cocaine to Deadpool yesterday? It was Lucy's idea. And you didn't think to at least try and stop her? No. It's from my dad. Are you aware that at every job you've been assigned to, your performance review has been lax enthusiasm? And it got done, didn't it? We've got a job for you after all. Do you have to clean up all the bodies? Mm, why would you lick your fingers? I just don't like it. I know a lot of people do that to turn pages, but I just think of like how unclean your hands are at any given moment. I just, mm. your catered snackables have arrived. Oh, it's prison. Okay. But you know what? This might be the help you need. I feel like these are the fun people, actually. The partiers. They may not be so bad once you get to know them. But I like that they show that, you know, even in their so-called perfect society, there's going to be exceptions. People who just don't fit in. Some rations if you're hungry. I'm not hungry anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, uh, you're the, sir. Oh, is this one of his bullies? I can't remember. Maybe that's why he's enjoying this. But either way, I don't like the fact that he's mistreating people. I mean, if, again, if it's one of his bullies, then fair enough. But how'd they get away? I was waylaid. A ghoul intervened. A ghoul? Huh. Those things are scary as shit. Bet you just killed it on sight, no questions asked. Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Great idea, sir. All wastelanders leave radiation trails. But allowing the ghoul to live. He didn't even think of that. Possible to trace the whereabouts Maximus of the... is not smart. That's one thing we found out. Resourceful, yes, but not smart. I think this was him? Hard to tell. Alright, they're a day behind then. His head is what's valuable. We need to find it. Oh, yeah, there smart. We go. Who do you think did this, the girl or the ghoul? The ghoul. Definitely. Oh, okay, sure. Continue to underestimate, please. Yeah, that way. Definitely. Definitely that way. Those tracks. <laughs> you can build a huge exosuit like that, but you can't get a trolley to carry that bag. Really? Couldn't just make a little little electronic cart? Okay. Can you help me find him? He'll do whatever you want. <laughs> he needs bait. Torturing a person. Don't do shit. Really? Shall we try you? Although I feel like you, your whole life is torture. Torturing a person don't do shit. Then why? Because it helps. It's this? for the torturer. It's never for the tortured. I'm using you as bait. Which I already figured that that's what he was doing, but this kind of is torture. It is waterboarding, effectively. Ma'am, you're gonna you're gonna swallow the entire ocean if you don't stop. Damn, that thing is big. Oh, such human eye. Oh no! Ew, fingers! Those are fingers. 
That is disgusting. You kind of deserve that. Come on, Lucy. Another <laughs> bag. No, not the puppy again. What is that? Oh, his hand. Okay. Is the dog gone? Now Lucy has no shoe. Oh, that's his bag. Right, his air things. Oh, well. Besides, how is she supposed to know what was in there? Of the golden rule. Aww. Do unto others as you'd have done unto you. That's what has been done unto him. Got his own golden rule. No, oh, what's that? Thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. <laughs> Facts. But why is the dog still fascinated with the water? I thought it went in for a second. Thank goodness. No more hurting the dog, please. On a fly farm? I was a shitter. So they'd feed us, and then they'd feed our shit to the flies. Mulch them up and sell us protein. Anyway, that's what I'm back. Okay, that's, you know, that's a job. It's a job. To be honest, me and the other guys used to be pretty hard on them. I'd like, regularly beat the shit out of them. Ah, one of his bullies. People at the base, they used to beat the shit out of me all the time. Yeah, see how the cycle continues? I just wish he lived long enough to find someone else to beat up, you know? Always seems fair. Well, there you go. Uh, I feel bad. Hmm. See, it's not so simple. Yeah, it's interesting, the way the cycle of abuse works. <laughs> uh, the fact remains, we need to decide what to do with these prisoners. And that is a decision that we need to make as a collective. Just trank them and leave them back on the surface. The young man Woody interrogated this morning? He left an impression on me. That is the gentleman who showed me his butthole. Yes, but what I took from that is okay. the desire to communicate. How? Is that what you think they do on the surface when we want to communicate? Given our recently dwindled numbers, the most ethical solution would be to rehabilitate the prisoners they don't, and then okay. integrate them into our They don't want to be, okay. I can teach the Raiders Shakespeare. And when they're ready, Marlowe. I don't want to be insensitive, but I think Shakespeare might be too advanced for these. Wow, wow. you assume they're dumb? So what do you propose we do? I think you know. We can do what they would have done to us. Wow. Jeez, the But I understand why morally that's not the right answer. It's, it's, it's the type of thing Overseer McLean would have preferred to discuss uh, privately uh, before bringing it to the full group. Mm. Let's hear it. Okay. okay well, uh, Let's find out. This place is not so utopic. The vault only has enough water to keep our population alive for uh, two months. And, and that's not accounting for the prisoners. Okay. Oh, but you, no, 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 let me finish. Don't you Kanye me now. Mm -hmm. That's right, give him the look. I warned you, but okay. I was also gonna say meeting adjourned, so. All right. Place falling well. apart. Y'all do not know what you're doing. If your father were here, he. Do you know? He'd do the right thing. Do you know that he would? Cause he definitely looked like he was keeping some secrets. I don't know. But taking out a bunch of people's not as easy as people think. There is a moral dilemma, dilemma there. And I don't think it should be taken light, lightly. But I also think that keeping them there when you have limited resources and trying to rehabilitate people who don't want it is not beneficial either. That thing is huge. <laughs> That's what she said. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're tracking the right abomination. You're about to become dinner Thaddeus. But sir. Go. Thank you, sir. All right. That one was much better than the one before you. Just randomly shoot. Okay, that's great. You should get back on the shore. Okay, stand and look at it. That was a good shot though, bro. Thanks, Thaddeus. Okay, bye, Thaddeus. He's gonna rip in half, isn't he? Oh wow, there's a lot of stuff in there. I was wondering, like, he doesn't really have teeth. It has fingers, so... Is the head in there too? Damn. All right, this just got more complicated. So where are the other two? Okay, as far away from the head as possible. Great. Oh, she still has the GPS, I forgot. Never mind. we're okay still, maybe. I need water. Please. What happened to you, sir? In the beginning, you seemed so sweet. See, 
I'm just too damn stubborn. If that were me, I would have just laid on the ground. I'm like, I'm going to die one way or another. So you can shoot me and make it quick. Or I'll just lay here and wait till I die. Dehydration. Either way, I'm not doing this no more. Water, water everywhere. Not a drop of drink. Radiation? <laughs> Direct impact. Yep. She's like, maybe leaving was a bad idea. All right. Well, the beef with the shelters is definitely personal. Maybe they turned him away too. I mean, we know that he got, res uh, well, actually he didn't even try to get into that first shelter. On behalf of the whole Voltec family, we wanted to say how delighted Voltec. we are that Barb could use her connections to get to you. You know, I've never done an advertisement before in my life. So he worked, he did ads for Voltec. Interesting. I just realized that that's the suit. So did ads for it, but couldn't get into one. On behalf of every decent American, I just want to say thank you. Oh. What was that nod she gave them? I'm confused. What is the wife up to? And why would they lie about the suit? If he, well, I mean, oh yeah, I forgot him and his wife got divorced. That's right. He did say alimony in the beginning. They don't want you to have ideas. So that's literally his ad. How crazy is that? Oh my gosh. I guess his face eventually got rubbed out of it. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, I got questions, guys. I have questions. So his wife was involved with vault early, got him to do the ads. Obviously, it became a cartoon versus his face at some point. Why? We're not sure. But as I just said, I remember now back in episode one that the guys at the birthday party were saying he was paying alimony. So they got divorced. So something happened and I have... No doubt it has something to do with this because the look when they when he asked about the suit, the wife gave a look like tell him whatever he needs to hear. Hmm, interesting. Looks like things were not uh, as paradise or as idyllic as it, it might have seemed in his mind anyways, at least to, to start with. So, all right, guys. Well, this episode, we had more progression with all of our different characters. The names are back now. Maximus and the ghoul and Lucy. I could not remember them at the beginning of the episode. Sorry. <laughs> but anyhow, we see that Lucy tried to get, to, you know, to a certain distance with the head. She was trying to figure out what was so special about it. She so far is the only person who's figured out that there's something in it, but there is some type of electromagnetic, um, electromagnetic charge. So it looks like she can't touch it, at least not yet. But I'm, I'm assuming that um, the lady they're trying to get to probably has a way of getting it out. But anyway, she stuck a tracker in it, thank God, before everything went south, just in case, like she said, which was very smart that she figured I could lose it. And um, yeah, it's a good thing she did because literally right after that, things went south in a handbasket. She's not used to this world. She's not aware of all the different creatures that are about. And we see a gulper, I believe he called it, went and it must have smelled the head and went after the head. Well, it went after her first, but, or the, the deer. And then it went for the head. And of course she cannot keep up with it. So it took off and took the head. She had the GPS, but of course it, it made no sense for her to get into the irradiated water and even begin to try to take this thing on. And then we see that the ghoul caught up to her. And the ghoul also figured out that the head must be important because why would you only take the head and not the whole body? And so that's when he basically wanted to get his hands on the head as well. And between the dog and her very obvious footprints caught up to her. And we see that um, they started to spend some time together. I think the main thing we can take is that the ghoul is not the same person that we saw at the beginning of the episode or the beginning of the series. That man seemed pretty nice. He seemed pretty soft. He seemed like he was a nice father, nice person. And now we see him being quite, quite, I don't know what's the best word to do. He's detached, I think is the best way. I don't think he's, be, he's being unnecessarily cruel, but he clearly doesn't have any empathy or sympathy at the moment. And God knows what he's going through because we saw that when we first were introduced to him, he was literally being buried alive with just a few IVs to keep him alive. So, and I don't think, I mean, maybe the nose thing is because of the radiation. I have a feeling though, oh no, the the bandit said that the, the whoever had him down there was cutting, were cutting pieces off of him once a year. So he was being slowly tortured and I'm still not sure why, but anyway, so I think it's safe to say that whatever he's gone through since that initial blast, which like we saw in the beginning, I think we can pretty much guess that he got a direct hit of radiation from that. As I said, I don't know what happened to his daughter. She was very young at the time. The chances of someone surviving that are quite low. But if he did and he mutated, it's possible his daughter did too. But like I said, there's a big question mark where that's concerned. And I have a feeling they keep showing her. So I don't think it's for nothing. But anyway, clearly this world and this life has hardened the heart 
of the ghoul. And we know his name is Coop, but he doesn't go by that. He hasn't told anyone his name yet. But um, yeah, we see that in the, the flashback in the beginning that he was an actor as we saw and that he wasn't really liking the way his career was going, but that everyone was kind of pushing him to do as he was told, right? We saw that like the director's like, just do what you're supposed to do. And he was like, well, I don't think that's the right thing. And then he said, let me talk to somebody that will listen to me. And he's like, oh no, that person was fired, right? So I think what the point that we're getting supposed to get as an audience is that before everything started going south, that Coop was already experiencing feeling a lack of control in his life for various reasons. And I think that what we saw eventually with his wife is we saw it looks like they had a very idyllic seeming marriage but uh, his wife was in the industry, I guess. And I'm not sure where she fits in yet, but there's definitely something going on there with them, her and the vault people. And we see he's got a lot of vitriol for vault too. So yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion his wife was not very forthcoming. And that again, this kind of goes back into him having his life slipping out of his control from people that he thought he could trust. And so, yeah, now we're seeing him now and his interactions with Lucy, as we can see, are very, just very cold, very disconnected from him using her as bait and basically saying, yeah, whatever, I'm doing what I need to do to get the job done. And her, of course, I mean, I think it's very clear to, to the ghoul that this, that Lucy's just completely naive, right? That she's not trying to pull one over on him. She's not trying to be cute. Like she's literally this naive and he knows it, but it's like he's punishing her for it, which again, she's done nothing to deserve. There's a lot of projection happening here, but I guess we're going to find out with these flashbacks we're getting. I'm sure there's a very valid reason as to why he has this level of vitriol, as I said, toward, towards the vault and the vault tech people. But anyway, we see that he's, you know, even just in the, d the desert, he knows she needs water and he's refusing to give it to her, right? And so she keeps asking like, what happened to you? Like, how did you get this way? And he's really not answering those questions, but I have a feeling that as they spend more time together, that story is gonna inevitably come. And also we see that he had some type of, some type of liquid he was inhaling because he started coughing there in the desert and he did that inhaler and it looks like it calmed it down. I was thinking from way back in episode one, there's gotta be side effects to his condition. Like, yeah, clearly it's preserving his life unnaturally, but it's radiation and it's still a human body. So I've got to think that there's gotta be some side effects and possibly things maybe that would make his condition worse or maybe speed up his inevitable end if he doesn't maintain it or control it. We still don't know what's in those IVs. So I'm thinking that there's something that he needs to keep himself alive. And we see that unfortunately that was destroyed. Whatever he's had left, I think he had two vials left and was destroyed by the gulper. So yeah, I have a feeling he's gonna be in dire straits soon. And this is when him and Lucy are gonna have to figure it out because that will level the playing field. Right now he's definitely at the advantage, but if he starts to feel the effects again and he needs someone like Lucy to help him, I think that's what's gonna give her that leverage eventually to finally have like a real conversation with him and, and have a, a situation where they're working together because right now he thinks he needs the bounty. And again, I don't think she even cares about the head. Lucy doesn't want the head for the bounty. We know that. She just wants to get her dad back. So once they can actually have a real conversation, I'm sure that they can come to something where he can get what he wants and she can get what she wants maybe. But I think we already know inevitably they're going to be working together in some way, shape or form. And then finally we had Maximus. That was his name. Uh, as I said in the episode, I'm trying to like him. I am. There's just something about him that still irks me at the moment, but I feel like he's definitely on a growing journey. So I'm going to do my best. I'm doing my best to be more patient with him and just kind of let it unfold. But yeah, he definitely is very rash. And I said this last episode as well. I get why he's doing what he's doing. I get that he wants to prove himself, that he wants to live up to this image in his mind that he has of what he's uh, a knight is supposed to be but he did not think any of this through, like from letting the knight die to trying to take over his persona, to try to do this mission by himself. Like it's just all these things keep happening to him and he keeps trying to roll with it. But like I said, I just, mm, I don't know what's gonna happen. At this point, it's definitely one fumble after another that he's barely managed to scrape by. But now that he's got a squire and the squire is his former bully, as I said in the episode, I wasn't liking the fact that after the way the, the last night, the original night Titus treated him. Like, why would he do that to somebody else? Like that really bothers me. I get it. I know the psychology behind it, but it just, it bothers me when I see it happen. And that's what kind of just took, you know, it took Maximus down a few points for me. But we see that later on when he and Thaddeus are talking, he basically tries to get Thaddeus to, you know, reinforce his belief system around with the kind of man that Thaddeus was because of what happened to him. And Thaddeus kind of exposes that, he was the one who was bullied before Maximus arrived and that it was horrible and that basically his transferring that to Maximus was a bit of a survival tactic. 
I mean, it, it doesn't sound to me like he wanted to necessarily carry on the tradition, but he knew it was going to happen. And sadly, Maximus was the target. And so does it make it right? Absolutely not. Does it mean, am I less sad about how, <laughs> how Maximus is treating him? A little bit, right? I'm like, that, you know, that's just karma, right? What goes around comes around. But that whole point, I think, was for Maximus to understand that this cycle won't stop unless someone kind of recognizes that, okay, maybe this was done to me, but I don't have to do it to somebody else, right? But anyway, um, I think from the, as we saw from that point forward, he stopped being as aggressive with Thaddeus as far as trying to make his life miserable. And it's a good thing too, because Thaddeus actually helped him by like telling him about the radiation trail and then also shot the gulper and saved, you know, because Maxim was just staring at the gulper like he was just waiting to get devoured. So yeah, you know, I think that those two could potentially forge a bond here because at some point we know the expose the expose of Maximus being in the in the suit's going to happen at some point, but whether or not it's going to become a you know an, an issue with him and Thaddeus, we'll see. But if they have enough time to bond together, it may not be. But I don't know. I have a sneaking suspicion Thaddeus is not going to make it too much further, anyways. But we'll see. But yeah, that was kind of an interesting kind of a moment there for Maximus around understanding kind of what happened to him and maybe not being so quick to judge people. But we see now that they are hot on the trail of Lucy and the ghoul. And because they interacted with the gulper that they tracked, they, they, they now have the head. So we're seeing how all these different things are happening to make our groups converge, right? At first, Lucy had no reason to be with the ghoul. But now because of the engineer, they are both working together and now this is how Maximus is being pulled in because now he's got the thing that they both need but I'm sure something's going to happen that's going to stop him from being able to take the head and go straight back to the covenant right they're going to something's going to happen I'm not sure what yet but I mean he did find Lucy's boot so there's a chance that Maximus is going to want to look for Lucy before they head back but yeah I'm seeing how they're kind of putting the little pieces together to have our group converge on each other and I'm just not sure yet at this point what that's going to mean or why and I feel like we are going to get to this lady. I can't remember her name, the one who uh, kidnapped Lucy's dad, but I'm just not sure what that's going to mean and how it's going to affect the overall plot yet. Because that's the only part I'm still not sure of yet with this show, like what the overall arc is supposed to be at this point. Like, we don't know who our bad is, if there is a bad. I don't think it's the lady who kidnapped Lucy's dad at this point. I do think that's definitely a misdirect because I, they dropped hints in episode one that Lucy's mom and dad both knew something about this woman ahead, like already knew her and already possibly were working with her. We also never heard about what happened to Lucy's mom. So I have a sneaking suspicion she's still alive as well. So yeah, there's a lot going on, I think still, but I'm just not sure what our culmination point's gonna be at this point. They definitely are not giving us any hints. So I'll have to wait till the next episode because I think there's, there's eight, right? Yeah, there's only eight episodes. So we're almost halfway through. So I very much expect that by episode four, we're gonna hear a little bit more about what our goal, what our actual like peak of this season will be. I think I just recently heard that season two has been greenlit for this show. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get a full on like culmination point in episode eight, but I still feel like we need to have an objective and I'm not sure what that is. I know what Lucy's goal is. I know she wants to get to her dad, but all these three people coming together there's got to be a reason behind it and whatever the heck is inside the engineer's head. And I'm just interested to know what that is. And so I'm hoping that we find out by next episode so we kind of know what the stakes are. But yeah, good episode. Like I said, I feel like this is these ones are becoming a lot more linear compared to the first episode. I enjoyed it a lot and I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please do show some love and I will see you in the next episode.